Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are looking at the 2019 AP Calculus BC free response questions, and we'll look at number five here. And so, um, as usual, if I make mistakes, I'll put uh, corrections in the description below, as well as uh, update the PDFs, also linked in the description below. So consider the family of functions this, find the value of k, k is greater than zero, such so as the slope of the tangent line at graph of, of f at x equals zero equals six. Okay, so I want to compute the derivative here. I'm going to write this as x squared minus 2x plus k to the negative 1. And so the derivative of this is negative uh, x squared minus 2x plus k to the negative 2 times 2x minus 2. Um, and so then this is going to be negative 2x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus k squared. So hopefully that made sense. This is a power rule and then chain rule derivative of the inside here. And then uh, I want to plug in uh, 0. So this would be negative negative 2 over k squared. Uh, that's 2 over k squared is equal to 6. And so k squared is equal to um, 1 third. And so k is equal to 1 over root 3. Or or uh, you know, root three over three, if you like, that's fine. Um, and they wanted k greater than zero, so we'd pick the positive value here. So, because technically it could be negative one over root three. Okay, find the value uh, zero to one of f of x dx, which is um, with x equals negative. So x squared minus two x minus eight dx. So this one we want to um, factor this this part here to to do this integral x minus four x minus 2, I think it's the factoring, oh no, x plus 2. So this is a over x minus 4 plus b over x plus 2, right? So a partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to multiply this one by x over 2, x over 2, and this one x over 4, x minus 4 over x minus 4. And this one I'm multiplying x plus 2 over x plus 2. And so then this side becomes a x plus 2 plus b x minus 4 over x plus 2 x minus 4. That is x times a plus b plus 2a minus 4b over uh, x plus 2 x minus 4. Okay, and so since this has to equal 1, the numerator has to be equal 1 for all values of x, that means a plus b would have to equal 0. 2a minus 4b would have to equal 1. So this is b is equal to negative a. And so this would be 6a has to equal 1. And so a is equal to 1 sixth. b would equal negative 1 sixth. So then this ultimately ends up being the integral from 0 to 1 of um, 1 sixth, 1 over x minus 4 minus 1 sixth, 1 over x plus 2. This becomes 1 6 ln x minus 4. Don't forget the absolute value signs. They're important. A lot of people will just drop them sometimes. You can only drop them if you know that the, the inside is going to be uh, bigger than 1. So this is going to be 1 6 ln of negative 3 minus ln of plugging in 0, negative 4 minus 1 6 ln of, um, so I'm going to factor out that this minus sign is going to be kind of a little bit problematic, or just to make sure you don't keep track, ln of 3 minus 1 sixth um, one ln of 2. So this ends up being 1 sixth, 1 sixth ln of 3, um, let's just factor out the 1 sixth minus ln of 4, minus ln of 3, uh, plus ln of 2. Okay, this 3 minus 3 is cancels. So this becomes ln of 2 minus ln of 4. And the rule I can do is ln of 2 over 4, which is 1 sixth ln of 1 half. Or if you want it as a negative number, negative 1 sixth ln of 2.
Either of these are fine. You don't have to simplify it to that level, but probably a little bit of simplification would have been good. And then for k equals 1, find the value of integral 0 to 2 f of x dx or show it di diverges. So this is integral 0 to 2 of 1 over x squared, what was it, uh, minus 2x plus 1 dx. That becomes integral 0 to 2, 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared dx. And so, um, no, x minus 1. I don't know, I'm thinking x plus x minus 1. Uh, so this integral, um, you know, it, it has a you know asymptote at x equals one. So really, you have to make this zero to one, kind of, plus the integral one to zero. Sorry, uh, one to two. Not really a one. You got to do a limit. So the only way that this this sum can converge is if each of these integrals uh, converges separately. Oh, I don't have my pointer going. Sorry, guys. Hopefully, you're going to be able to see um, see my little cursor here. Um, yeah, the only way this can converge is if both of if both of these sums have to converge, right? Like both of these areas would have to converge in order for this to work. So let's let's look at one of these. Um, I would do the integral to z. I'm going to take the limit as c approaches one from the left in this case of one over x minus one squared dx. Okay, so to do this integral, I'm going to drop the limit for now and apply the limit later. To do this integral, um, you can kind of do a u. This is like u to the negative 2 or x minus 1 to the negative 2. So it's really 1 over x minus 1 evaluated from 0 to c. And so that's negative 1 over c minus 1 minus um, the minus cancel. That, so plus 1 over 0 minus 1. That's equal to negative 1 over c minus 1 minus 1. And the limit as c approaches 1 of this, as it goes to 0, if I compute this limit, is, is diverges. So this area here diverges. And this is actually symmetric. A 1 over x squared looks kind of like this. And it's centered at 1. So this area, what they're saying is this area diverges. Um, Supposed to diverge? Yeah, I guess the area does diverge. At least that's what according to according to this thing, uh, this diverges, and um, this area would also diverge if you did the exact same thing. So the sum of the two areas are going to diverge. Um, there's no like canceling of, of anything that's happening. So, um, okay, good. So hope you found that helpful. Um, and uh, let me know how you did, and I'll see you in the next video.